If you were to call a girl Angel Face, she'd have to be a beautiful girl. A girl as beautiful and lonely as Dolores. Caught doing a job she didn't especially care anything about. Waiting for the chance to get away from it all. With the boy she loved. Hello, creeps. This is T4Y. Opening the doors to the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight we bring you a modern horror story. Complete with chills and frightening situations. It's called Angel Face and it was written by Mr. Walter Wilson. I felt it was worth bothering with even though Mr. Wilson is somewhat a newcomer at this writing game and we had planned to bring you one of the more prominent authors from our shelves downstairs. Here then is Angel Face by Walter Wilson. Our scene is a smart nightclub in Midtown Manhattan. Seen Miss... Yes, sir, I know. She's waiting for you all right. The corner table. You're late tonight, Mr. Wrangler. Uh, yes, I know. Thank you. Oh, here you are, Dolores. I... Sorry I'm late. I... Oh, gosh, Dolores. You look lovely. Hi, Joe. Gee, I'm getting so I can't think about anything but you. All day at the bank, I keep wishing it was time to get off so I could see you. Oh, Joe, you're sweet. I think about you all the time, too. I guess I thought there never could be anyone like you. For me, anyway. I never thought I'd meet anyone like you. A real nice guy like you. You know what some people think of chorus girls. And gee, you make me feel like I was something out of this world or something. Oh, you are, Dolores. You got a face just like an angel. <sighs> you say such pretty things, Joe. Sometimes I almost want to cry you say such pretty things. Three weeks ago, we didn't even know each other. But we were meant to meet. We were meant to stay together, too, you and I. Or always. And we can't let anything interfere and spoil things for us ever. Why, Joe... You think that, too, don't you, Dolores? Tell me you think that. Joe, darling, what's the matter? Of course nothing's going to spoil things for us. I, I couldn't live without you, Dolores. I, I just couldn't live without you. Joe, I love you. I love you like I never loved anyone before. You're the first person who's ever been really kind to me. I know something's the matter. Tell me, Joe. Maybe I couldn't help but tell me. It hurts knowing there's something wrong and me not knowing what it is so I could help. Oh, Dolores. Is it... Is it something at the bank? Joe, it's not something at the bank. Dolores... Is it? Well... Yes. Joe. I, I, I was going to put it back. I I just needed some money quick. But what for? What was it? It, it was important. It, it was the first important thing that ever happened to me, Dolores. I, I, I couldn't let it slip away. Joe. Joe, do you mean to say you did it for me? All that money you've been spending on me, taking me to expensive places like this... Th that was... Don't, don't you see? Just see, I was afraid I'd lose you. Oh. Look, Joe. I have a little money saved up. Not much, of course, but some. Take it and put the money back if it's enough. How much was it? You'd do that for me? Oh, no, no, it's too late for that. It, it was only four or five hundred, but the auditors will catch up to me in a day or two, and then it'll be all up. They, they came unexpectedly. Oh, it's no use, Dolores. We can't do this, Joe. Look, we'll run away. We'll go somewhere where they'll never find us. They can't do this to us. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for, Dolores. I don't care. Wherever you go, I'll go with you. 
You won't be afraid? Not with you, Joe. I won't be afraid of anything. Oh, Joe, hold my hand. Hold it tight. Darling. I'll be all right, Joe. We'll make out, won't we? Joe, I said it... Dolores, be... uh, it's, uh... It's going to take money to get away. You can have everything I've got, Joe. And I can hock that bracelet you gave me uh, and... They're going to be after me anyway. Well, what do you mean? Well, a lot of money would help. There's an old saying, you might as well hang for a sheep. Joe! Look, they don't suspect anything yet. But I've got to work fast. If, if I could lay my hands on some real money, say... Say 20,000. Oh, no, Joe, we've got trouble enough. But they're going to try to send me to jail for a few hundred anyway, Dolores, and with 20,000... Won't this just make it worse? Darling, it can't be any worse. Will you stick with me, Dolores? Will you? Will you, darling? I told you I'd do anything. Whatever we have to do. I'm sticking with you, Joe. Yes, so what can I do for you, please? Uh, are you a locksmith? Yes. Yes, you want some keys made, perhaps? Uh, no, I, uh, I want you to do a job for me. A sort of a special job. Well, why not? I'll make it worth your while. You see, uh, here, here's the address. It's right, right in the neighborhood. Let me see. Miss Dolores Still, apartment 11E, 201 Bedford... Uh, I don't know about this. I'll uh, have to explain it to you when we get there. Well, if it's a lock, I can fix it. I told you I'd make it worth your while. Well, I, I'd have to charge you for it. A special job like this and leaving my shop and all. Here, here. Well, let's do. Oh, sure, Mr. Sure. Yeah. For this, I can fix <laughs> Sure. I worried so every minute. Uh, I, I think it's all right. Nobody noticed a thing. They won't know till they balance the books tomorrow night. And by that time, we'll we'll be a long way away. They won't think anything tomorrow morning when you don't show up for work. I uh, I told one of the boys I was going to the races, and he's going to tell them I phoned in and said I was sick. And that'll give me a good start on them. I'm sure it will. It'll work out all right. You'll see. Yeah. Well, here it is, in this little satchel. $20,000. Gee. I want you to have a duplicate key to the satchel in case anything happens to me. No, no, nothing must happen to you, Joe. It can't, it just can't. Oh, of course, nothing will happen to me. I, I only meant just in case. No. No, I don't want the key. If anything happened to you, I wouldn't want the money. What good would it do me? The only reason we've got it is so you and I can have a chance at living and belonging to each other. Maybe we're doing wrong, I don't know. I guess people would say it's wrong. Only it's the only way we have a chance of being together, and that couldn't be wrong, could it? No. No, you and me, that's the rightest thing in the world. We've got to get going in a minute. Just let me kiss you. Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe, you're trembling. I know, I know. It'll pass. It's just my nerves. It'll pass off in a minute. Here, take a little brandy. It'll fix you up. Here you are. Thanks. Guess I need it. You're not having any? No. You know I never could drink brandy. Well. Oh, oh that feels good. When I need it, all right. Oh, sure, Joe. Yeah. Just what you needed funny. All of a sudden, What's I... the matter, Joe? I... I, I, I feel so... I, Dolores, I... 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 Joe. Joe.
Yeah. Al? Yeah. Can you talk? The coast's clear. All set? Sure, Al. Did he fall for it, Dolores? Of course he fell for it. The sucker. <laughs> Like a light. Nice going, baby. It was the same. You sure can handle him. Well? Come on, kid. We got work to do. Don't I even rate a kiss? Oh, sure, sure, baby. I, I was just thinking maybe we ought... <laughs> Is that all? Well, that's better, Al. You liked that, didn't you? Yeah. You still love your little Dolores, don't you? Well, you couldn't get along without her, now, could you, Al? Oh, sure, sure. You know I love you, Dolores. Sure, Dolores knows her little boy loves her. She just wants to be sure, that's all. Oh, Dolores. And Al would never think of leaving his little Dolores. Now, would he? That wouldn't be a wise thing to do at all. Would it? Oh, take it easy, Dolores. What's eating you? You know me. Sure, I know you, Al. We've been around a lot together, you and me. It isn't as if this was our first job. Okay. Okay. Oh, this one was a cinch. He fell for it even harder than that guy in Chicago. What, what was his name? Uh, oh, Tom Stevens. Don't use names like that. Someday you'll say something in the wrong place. Relax, Al. Everything's hunky-dory. Yeah, I know, well, but What are you was... worrying about Tom Stevens for? They're still looking for him and the payroll he made off with. Tom's been six feet under for nearly a year now. And even if somebody does dig up that truck... Dolores, lay off. <laughs> oh, Tom was kind of nice. He always used to call me Angel Face. Remember? Angel Face, cripes. What's the matter with Angel Face? Oh, come on now, Al. Don't look so sour. We just made 20 grand. I feel swell. Come to think of it, I feel kind of hungry. Hungry? Sure, hungry. I'll rustle up something in the kitchen. Please. I couldn't eat a thing. Oh, come on. Now, that's no way to talk. We got a job to do tonight. You gotta keep up your strength, Al. Yeah, well, look, let's get that guy out of the way before somebody walks in. No huh? one's gonna walk in. And him, he's out cold for a good four hours. Well... Oh, okay, okay. Let's dump him in the trunk. I'll give you a hand. Yeah, let's get this thing over with, huh? I wonder why they always seem to weigh so much more when they're out this way. I don't know. <laughs> Close it, Al. Yeah. All right. I suppose we get going, huh? Well, what's your hurry? I told you I was hungry. Come on out to the kitchen. It beats me the way you calmly go ahead. All right, all right. I tell you, he's out for hours. We got plenty of time because when he comes to, he'll be six feet under. Shut up, will you? <laughs> Come along. We'll look in the icebox. Maybe I can find you a chicken heart. <laughs> Another red light. Take it easy, Al. We're not trying to catch a train. Yeah, well, I don't like it. Maybe somebody saw us. Maybe maybe somebody will stop us or something. Sure, maybe this, maybe that, maybe anything. Maybe we wouldn't have a thin dime between us if I listened to you squawking all the time. Well, go ahead. You got the green. Okay, okay. I just feel better when we get rid of this load. I don't like driving around with anything hot like this. Ah, you're a dope. We haven't got such a hot load. Oh, yeah? We could face a murder rap, and you say it isn't hot. Not on this trip, Al. Not on the way out. The guy's alive still, ain't he? Of course, I admit it. It takes some fast talking to explain why we got him in a trunk. But if someone was to stop us this very minute and found him there, wouldn't be no murder rap. He's alive. So just relax, Al. We got no worries.
That's deep enough, ain't it? Yeah. Okay. That hole will take the trunk, all right. Here, we'll drag it over. <laughs> Tell you, I'll be glad to see the last of this. Right, it's heavy. Here. Let's shove it down. No, no. Wait a minute. What for? I... I, I just want to see if I can hear him breathing. Hear anything? No. No, not a thing. You suppose... No, you couldn't hear a thing through the trunk anyway. He's just out cold from that drink I gave him. Open it up if you want to. See. No, no. All right, then. What are we waiting for? Here, help me give it a shove. Okay. Shovel the dirt back in. Al, take your shovel and get to work. Al, what are you just standing there for? You think... You think... He, come, he comes to down there... Under the ground, and and there isn't any air, and and and. Al. Well, what do you think? The air's gone, and and it's all over. Even before he comes to. Give me that shovel. There, top's covered over. You can hardly see any of the trunk now. Here, you can finish it. Take the shovel, Al. Well, that's over with. 20,000 now. 20,000 cash. Yeah, I guess we can use it, all right. You're darn tootin' we can. And there's more where that came from. What do you mean? If the guy's dead, how could... How he can... wasn't the last sucker alive, Al. There's plenty more where he came from. Now, look, don't, don't you think we ought to lay low for a while? We, we don't want to take no chances. We got enough to last us for a while Who's now. Who's taking any chances? No one will ever pin anything on us. Yeah, but I, I still think it wouldn't do no harm to kind of lay low for a while after this job, see? Al, you'll never change. What do you mean I won't change? You're a small-timer. Just like when I picked you up. A small-time punk. That's all you'll ever be. Don't you talk that way to me. Shut up. Small-time punk. Small-time rackets for small-time dough. Yeah. Well, at least I didn't have no murder raps hanging over me till I met you. I can thank you for that. Well, of all the ungrateful, low-down... Here I pick you up practically out of the gutter and make a man of you. I cut you in on some big-time stuff, and that's the gratitude I get. Just let me tell you one thing, pretty boy, and oh, that Dolores. is... Dolores. Yes? Uh, I, I'm sorry, Dolores. It, it's just my nerves. See, I, 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 I say things I don't mean. Well, that's better. Yeah, yeah, it's just my nerves. I I got to thinking about about the guy in that trunk uh, and the cops. He's six feet underground, Al. And why should you worry about it? Joe wasn't exactly a friend of yours. After the way he made love to me, you'd hardly call him a friend of yours. Yeah, well, I didn't like that part of it either. <laughs> the way he used to make love to me. Dolores would say you got a face like an angel. He said he thought there never could be anyone like me. Yeah, you had something there. He used to say he could never live without me. He said we'd loved each other all our lives. The only part of our lives that mattered. And then he'd kiss me. <laughs> I bet that used to make you jealous, Al, huh? Yeah. Didn't it, Al? Didn't that used to make you real jealous? I told you I didn't like that part of it, didn't I? <laughs> well... You won't have to be jealous anymore, will you, Al? You'll have your little Dolores all to yourself. You'll like that, won't you? Yeah. We got 20 grand, and Dolores is going to buy her pretty boy a nice present. We'll be home soon. Uh -huh. And we'll be all alone. Just Al and Dolores. <laughs> Home again. Yeah. No, don't turn on the light for a minute. Just kiss me first. Oh, baby. <laughs> All right, you can turn on the light now. <gasps> Joe! Joe! Good evening, Dolores. Cripes. 
Why, you... Take it easy, Al. Can't you see he's got a gun? You're supposed to be dead. Why don't you two sit down? You're uh, both a little overwrought. Now, now, there. There we are. I think we've got a few things to talk over. But, uh, calmly. That's why I've got this gun, so we can talk things over calmly. You're supposed to be dead. You must have got out of the trunk while we were Maybe, in the kitchen. Uh, you'd like a spot of brandy. Probably chilly from your little expedition. Grave digging is so depressing, don't you think? Oh, don't worry. The brandy was not poison. I saw to that this morning. How'd, how'd you get out? The trunk was locked. I thought it would be. That's why I saw a locksmith this morning when you were out and had it fixed so it could be unlocked from the inside. You see, uh, I made a few plans, too. Like putting those weights in the trunk to take my place. And you got out of the trunk while we were in the kitchen. Oh, you smart guy. You real smart guy. But you haven't got a thing on us. We'll let the police be the judge of that. You ain't gonna call no cops, Joe. You can't afford to. You got a rap waiting for you, and you know it. A little matter of the bank's $20,000. Oh, that, huh? Well, you see, uh, I don't work in a bank. What? Where'd you get that cash? It belonged to me. And you and I didn't meet by chance, Dolores. I waited a long time to meet you. Yeah. I looked for you a long, long time. What did you want to meet me for? Because I want to see you and this punk of yours hang for the murder of Tom Stevens in Chicago. What? How'd you know about that? Let him talk. Bell. Let him talk. Doesn't make any difference now. I've got all the evidence I need. It all fits together. Okay, so we did bump off Stevens. But it's still just your word against ours. No, no. No, it's your word. Your words verbatim. I told you I did some planning, too. That dictograph behind your chair has just this moment recorded your confession. Why, you... Stay right there. Now, that's better. Now, I've got a call to make. The police. Remember, I've still got you covered. Oh, uh, you wanted to know where I got the money. The 20000 you thought I'd taken from the bank I told you was mine? It is. And quite legally. The paid claim of a life insurance policy of which I was the beneficiary. Tom Stevens of Chicago. Tom Stevens? Yeah, the man you killed. Tom Stevens. That's right, isn't it? That's right, isn't it, Angel Face? Angel Face? Th that's what Tom... Yeah, that's what Tom used to call you, isn't it? But how did you uh, know? I guess I forgot to tell you. My name isn't Joe Anglin, it's Joe Stevens. You see, Tom was my brother. <laughs> That was Angel Face, a modern surprise in horror stories, written for the Mystery Playhouse by Walter Wilson. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Well, it's getting early again. This is T4Y, closing the doors to the Mystery Playhouse and saying good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.